So members of Paradise Lost, uh, Madame Bride, At the Gates, Doom. When I first heard of this project, it was like, oh, the new supergroup, Bonfire. So, do you see yourselves as if you have achieved the status of a supergroup? Absolutely not, because I think it's a ridiculous title. You know, it's like it means that you are super, and I don't feel very super. You know, uh, it makes me feel like you, you have to wear a cape and a mask on stage. You know, so like a superhero, but. No, it's just it's just a band. It's just a group of friends doing music that they love. You know, it's, it's we all grew up with this kind of music. All the guys in the band, and we're just doing it for fun. You know, something that we enjoy doing. You know. Oh yeah. So this new album, Fragile King, um, being in bands such important to metal, um, such different from each other. Uh, was there a problem, um, egos or sound direction when recording this of Fragile King? No, not at all. And, uh, and the reason for that is that we've all been in bands long enough to realize that egos don't get you anywhere. There's yeah. no point having a, an ego. Nobody has an ego in, in, in the band, you know, because you learn. It's only younger bands that tend to have egos these days because they haven't realized that um, it's pointless, you know. Um, no, we, we, we're all a group of friends. We grew up with the same stuff. And... When I asked them to get involved in it, they, they wanted to hear it and they heard it. And they, they, it reminded them of being a kid, like, just like it does me. So um, everyone was just happy to be involved and we just had a good time recording it. You know, we, we kind of got drunk and listened to the music and yeah. acted like we were teenagers again, you know? Yeah. Well, man, uh, Bottom Fire has been named as a return to your dead metal roots. Uh, it is a return. Do you have. Do you think that you have maybe lost your roots in the way with Paradise Lost or something like that? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. Because with a band like Paradise Lost, we've been going a long time, you know. I feel like we just evolved. We just, uh, as people get older, they kind of listen to a lot of different types of music. And then, it, it, you know, and then eventually maybe come back around to what they had first listened to. Uh, I think Paradise Lost is just a natural evolution. Um, and I think with Valentine, Fire, it's like me visiting an old girlfriend. You know, it's kind of like my first love. I, that was the first music I got into, and I think the <laughs> yeah. first music you get into you, it never really leaves you, you know? Yeah. So, would you say that the material we can find on The Fragile King cannot be put in any of the other bands released, like um, in a Paradise album or a My Dying Bright album? Uh, no, I don't think so, because... There's a different vibe to it. There's a different feel to it. Um, it's kind of... We, we tried to make this album feel as if it's from the time that we grew up, you know, even the production. Um, so I think all the bands, the other bands that everyone's in, you know, the Gates, My Down Bad, etc., all these bands have kind of changed slightly over the years. And this the Valentire band is more about being back in time where we were then, you know. All right. So, you say that this material done in the front of King or maybe all in Bottom Fire was never meant to be heard by anyone else. So, what makes you releasing it now? Um, it's because it's partly because the other guys in the band, and partly because a friend of mine at Century Media, um, you, you know, the guys in the band said, you know, you should put this stuff out. You know, it's, it's good. People will like it. Uh, and I wasn't so sure. Um, so the, I, the, the, we sent a demo off to um, a friend of mine that works at Century Media, and he said, you know, you should put it out. You know, even even if it's about a personal subject, it can be more of a tribute, you know. So um, so I agreed. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I really like the sound of the album. So I, I don't really care if anyone else likes it. I have to be honest, I don't care, you know. But, um, it's nice for people to understand what it's about and appreciate where the music came from, you know? Yeah. So you're not afraid of the sales of the album or something like that? You're not worried about it? No, no. It was never about selling anything. I don't care, you know. If, if it sells one copy, I couldn't care less. It's more about um, doing something that we love together as friends, you know, doing the music we love. And in a way as well, showing some of the younger death metal bands, what the original death metal was supposed to sound like, you know? Yeah, 
Well, that's my next question. So, in these days, we have so much hybrids of dead metal, like dead core or metal core or whatever mix you want with dead and something else. So, yeah. are you more a fan of the innovation in the dead field, or you're more a fan of the old school thing? Um, yeah, I mean, I, all the bands I grew up with are the influence on this record. You know, uh, there's no influences beyond 1992. I don't think. You know, <laughs> it's everything before that. So, yeah. um, but I still, I still check out a lot of newer bands, and um, I, I like a lot of newer bands, but. I wouldn't necessarily call them influencers, and I don't think any of the modern death metal really does anything for me. I prefer old, older death metal, you know. I think I think it's a little overproduced today, you know. It's kind of too edited, and you know the guitar sounds are too clean and things like that, you know. So I'm kind of more old school, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's great.